here and uh, uh, insightful presentation. So I hope you're all dying to go back to your computers, find out more about Green Touch, and participate in its research. Um, in case you're wondering who I am pontificating about all of this, my name is Suresh Goyal, and I'm the head of Green Research in Bell Labs. Um, Green Research in Bell Labs has more than 75 researchers working on energy-related innovations. And you know, one of the coolest achievements that we've had from this research was the co-founding of the Green Touch Consortium. Right? Um, you know, Green Touch research, we participate, continue to participate heavily in Green Touch, and it really forms the core of our research programs. And over the next few days, you'll hear about some of the really exciting work that's going on uh, within that context. Um, and for us, and G pointed us this out very clearly, one of the main attractions of Green Touch is this framework that you have for knowledge sharing, for idea validation, finding out what's the right thing to work on, and the rich collaborations that result. Okay? But I believe all that is not enough. We need more. And I think that's why I'm really excited about this workshop at IASE. Um, you know, given India's growth and needs, and G mentioned some numbers, the uh, long tradition that we have on sustainable things, I remember as a child, you're not allowed to waste anything, you know. And you hear news about people doing sustainable innovation villages all the way up to universities. Given all of that, and the brain power that you've demonstrated uh, with the sort of questions you asked of G, it's clear that Green Touch cannot meet its goals unless we engage, it engages deeply with the Indian ecosystem. Okay? Um, so I think of India as a key partner for Green Touch moving ahead. Okay? Talking of uh, key partners, um, it's my pleasure to introduce another key partner in Green Touch, Professor Rod Tucker. Um, you know, Rod is a, a laureate professor at the University of Melbourne and director of the University of Melbourne's Center for Energy Efficient Telecommunications. He's also director of the Institute for the Broadband Enabled Society, which is a foundation member of the Green uh, Touch uh, Consortium. Okay. And I'll tell you about uh, Rod. Uh, his connections to Green Touch are really long and deep. Uh, he did seminal work in energy trends modeling and so on, which forms the basis of Green Touch. And since its inception, he's remained engaged in every aspect of Green Touch, setting it up, setting the framework, setting up the research programs. It's just incredible. To me, Rod and Green Touch are synonymous. You know, I want to relate to one incident. Um, you know, uh, two and a half years ago, when Green Touch was set up, the night before the announcement, there was a dinner okay, in London. So uh, after that, you know, like, like it is in London, dark, foggy, rainy, uh, and we had to head back to the hotel. So a few of us decided we were going to walk. Okay? And um, Rod uh, said, I'll navigate. So he said, do you know where it is? He said, yeah, I was here 20 years ago. So OK. So we start walking. It takes about an hour. You know, you're going left, right. You're jumping over brooks. You know, you're jumping over rocks, going through people's backyards. You know? And eventually, about an hour later, we were there, perfectly, right? So I asked Rod, Rod, how can you remember all this? 20 years, right? It's un unbelievable. And he says, uh, no, 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 sir, it's very simple. A mile from the hotel, there was this tower. And I was just aiming for that tower, right? So to me now, that tower is Thousand X. And the navigation of folks like Rod and everybody else will get us there, okay? So, Rod. Actually, you didn't know it, but I had an iPhone with uh, Google. But I had an iPhone with uh, Google Maps, and I was peeping at that, and you couldn't see. Okay, thank you. I'd like to talk about uh, how Green Touch is making a difference, and I guess what I'll be doing is expanding on some of the, the themes that uh, G has already introduced. I'd like to start with this slide, which uh, to me encapsulates 
the enormous transformations we're seeing at the moment in the uh, in the technology arena. This this is data from a paper that was recently published where a group of researchers have been tracking the global capacity in technology uh, in um, uh, communications, computation and storage. And I've just focused here on storage and, and communications. And there are three data, there's four data points there and I've extrapolated beyond uh, the latest, last one which was 2007. And you'll see that uh, both uh, the, the total storage capacity on the planet is, and the telecommunications capa capacity has been growing, but um, the telecommunications capacity has been growing very fast in recent years. And in fact, if you extrapolate beyond that uh, last data point, as I've shown with those dotted lines, about now, 2012 or thereabouts, uh, the, uh, the, the, the amount of uh, uh, telecommunic the telecommunications capacity in bits per year, by the way, which is an unusual uh, uh, data rate, uh, unit for data rate, um, and storage, of course, is in the number of bits. Uh, it the telecommunications capacity in bits per year exceeds that of the storage, which basically means we're getting to the point now that we're in a less than, than a year it's possible to, to um, via telecommunications, to access all information on Earth. And the, uh, with the, the extrapolation, the way this graph shows it, that in the future uh, it'll be even less than a year and we'll be able to get huge amounts of data in, in relative short, amount, short amounts of time. So I, I guess this audience is already aware of the fact that there is tremendous growth in this field. This slide, in fact, summarises my talk. And, and uh, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, through this talk, explain how this... Uh, uh, data was generated. What I've shown here is on the vertical axis is the, a, a, an estimation, and I, I uh, have to stress that it's an estimation, an estimation of the total power consumption of the global internet in watts uh, as a function of time. Uh, and this is extrapolated on, on the basis of assumptions about growth in data rate, which is currently about 50% per annum on the internet, growth in the, in the number of users, um, and a number of other assumptions. And I, I also need to point out that this is a very conservative estimate because it doesn't include growth in wireless. So in fact, this data doesn't apply directly to, uh, to uh, uh, what's happening in India. But you can see that uh, on the left, uh, in 2010, the total power consumption of the internet was about uh, 10 to the 10 watts. Uh, and for reference, the global electricity supplies is a, is a bit over 10 to the 12 watts. So the, the internet at the moment consumes less than a, a, a percent of the, of the global electricity supply. But you can see from this uh, graph that, uh, that it's increasing. And I've shown two graphs here, one for zero percent efficiency gains and one for 15 percent efficiency gains. Now this is the, the gain that, uh, in efficiency in the equipment that, that underpins the network. So as G pointed out, Moore's Law is providing us with equipment that is uh, getting better as, uh, as uh, better technology comes along. Um, and an optimistic version of how rapidly equipment uh, improves is about 15% per annum. But of course, you could only achieve this in the internet if you replaced all the equipment in the network every year, which of course will never happen. And in fact, as I'll explain later in this talk, the efficiency gains are somewhat less than 15%. So in practice, and if you take into account wireless, you're getting much closer to the, the dotted line uh, where, um, where, where the actual efficiency of the network is close to 0%. This is a business as usual uh, estimate. And you can see that if you go out to 2025, and I has, I have to um, point out that it's a pretty, it's a, it's a, why it's a pretty brave person to predict accurately out to 2025. But even so, you can see that potentially the consumption of the network is approaching the the the, the total global electricity supply. So clearly, there is there is a, there's something that needs to be done about this. So in this talk, as I said, I'll, I'll, I'll explain some of the, the assumptions and thinking behind this particular graph. To put this into context, what what Green Touch wants to do is this. We'd like to see a network that, uh, in fact, uh, where the total power consumption decreases uh, and not increases. And I'll be explaining, uh, as G has done, on, uh, about some of the work that uh, Green Touch is doing to do this. You know, it's not all bad news about the growth of power consumption of the internet. Uh, it, uh, the internet can be used to replace air travel. I came here from Melbourne a few days ago 
Actually, this is not quite correct because I stopped in Singapore. Uh, and that uh, I, I uh, generated 3,000 kilograms of CO2 equivalent in coming to and then going home again from uh, Bangalore tomorrow. If we'd done this uh, by video conferencing using uh, very high quality equipment, and let's make a pretty generous assumption of a gigabit per second each direction for, for me, um, and 16 hours of conference time, if you work out how much energy that uses, it would produce about 50 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. So what, I really enjoy being here, and I'm glad I came, but I could have stayed back in Australia and uh, consumed a lot less uh, energy. So there is good news, even with the internet consuming as much energy as it does at the moment. So what I'd like to do in this talk is, is give an overview. Is this loose connection here? It sounds like it is. The, can you hear me at the back? You can, OK. The, um, I'd like to talk about the energy implications of net worth growth and give you some uh, background behind the, mes the methods I used for producing that graph that I showed before. And this includes details about energy modelling of the networking, the network, and I'll say something about data centres as well because data centres are, are increasingly important part of the total picture. Uh, I'll be talking about what are the key contributors to uh, network energy consumption because once we know what the key contributors are, uh, Green Touch can of course then focus on those areas. And I'd like to expand a bit more on some of the questions that were asked of G's talk about the, the gap between the, uh, fund the current practice and what these fundamental limits might be if we really do very good research. And this will help to put that factor of a thousand that G talked into, into context. Uh, I'd also like to, uh, what I'm also planning to do is talk about some of the projects in Green Touch and say why we're making a difference. And, and I'm also going to uh, give you some very useful information about why your organisation should join Green Touch. And if your organisation is already a member of Green Touch, why you should be involved. So let's, let's think about how we can estimate the energy consumption of the network. And there are really two approaches that have been used in the literature. The first is uh, based on inventory and sales. And uh, what you can do is you can work out the, the, the total sales per unit of equipment per year, and the data's out there. You can work at the lifetime of the equipment. You can work at whether it goes to residential industry or commercial uses. You can then work out the total stock on the planet. Um, and you can divide that by, uh, by uh, category. Uh, and then you can work out the usage down the bottom, the power needs for all that equipment, and you can build up a, a total energy uh, use and give a, a work out a total energy consumption, basically by counting all the pieces of equipment on Earth, knowing at the, what, where they are, and, and adding up the amount of, of power. And people have done this. But it doesn't really give you much information about how you could go about making it, uh, the energy consumption better. So what we do in, in Green Touch is, is a more uh, network-based approach. We work on a, a transaction-based network modelling approach, which um, basically calculates the power of resources required to deliver the, the services. Um, and it takes into account that the network equipment depends on the service type. And we include in this analysis network design rules so that we actually have a model of a network which which we hope is a realistic uh, model of the actual network, which then, then having that model, we're able to then approach a, a redesign of the network in order to improve energy efficiency. The reason why services are, uh, need to be taken into account to this is the fact that different, uh, ser different uh, services use different pieces of equipment. So you can see on this table here, if you're doing general web surfaces, uh, uh, surfing, then you need a fixed access network, or in fact, I guess this should say also uh, wireless access, uh, metro and edge network, long haul and enterprise networks, whereas video uses a different set of equipment. So in part, in building up this model of a network, in addition to taking into account the equipment that's out there, you need to think about the services that run over that equipment and think about the mix of services that uh, add to the total energy consumption. And this is really the, the underpinning uh, approach that we use in Green Touch. And to do this, we have to actually segment the network into parts and develop a fairly detailed model of the network. And this, this metal model is simply here to show you that it's a fairly complex thing, the, the telecommunications network. Down the bottom, I've got uh, two access networks connected together through, the, through the, 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 the center of the network. And you can see that we've shown here a number of different uh, access technologies. On the bottom left, there's... Um, uh, 
a, a passive optical network at the top, uh, a, a fiber to the node uh, structure 